I am Shubha Sharma, co-manager at uh, Campus France Delhi, India. I welcome you all on the fourth day of virtual tour organized by French Institute in India, which is uh, part of the French Embassy in India. The main objective of this uh, PhD tour is to provide an idea of the scientific landscape of France in different themes. And uh, this webinar's theme is Engineering Sciences and Sustainable Development. This particular theme garners uh, a lot of interest in private and public domain. So it is important to know in detail about the rich scientific culture of France, PhD programs in France, scholarships available, as well as the process of application. Uh, to provide you with all such information, we have a wonderful panel of French professors with us today. Uh, we have Professor Sylvain Franche, who is from Group of Research and Innovation in Electrochemistry for Energy, Institute for uh, Materials and Molecular Chemistry at University of paris -Saclay. We have uh, Professor Jean-Marc Lahore, Laboratory Director, Electrical Communication Systems and Microsystems, University uh, Gustav Eiffel. We have Professor Christine Shiraza, who is Director of Doctoral School at the University of Lorraine. And we have with us Professor Jean-Claude Dufour, who is a Professor at Telecom uh, Paris, Institute of Polytechnic Study. So we understand it is also equally important to have an idea of uh, student life during your PhD both at personal and professional levels. And to give you an insight of that, we have uh, Dr. Praveen Madriani, who's aluminous from Paul Central de Nantes. We will listen to all these panelists in a bit, but before that, to complete the whole picture, the Deputy Dashi for uh, Scientific and University Cooperation, Ms. Ambika, will provide you with a brief description, which would help you with the different aspects of uh, pursuing a PhD in France. Over to you, Ambika. Uh, thank you, Shubra, and uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Ambika. I'm located in Bangalore, uh, along with the attache for uh, scientific cooperation, Dr. Francois Xavier, and I manage the scientific and academic cooperation in the south of India. Uh, so I'm really happy to see that we have a wonderful lineup of panelists here today with us coming from very diverse background, as the title suggests, because we have to include PhD in both engineering science and sustainable development here. Uh, so while the demand for engineering sciences has always been there in India, and I can proudly say that it is one of the strengths of Indian science, the emergence of sustainable development is quite recent in India. France is strong in the field of both engineering sciences and sustainable development. And this will be confirmed further by our very interesting panelists today. I'm sure all of you will have interesting questions to ask to our panelists about anything professional or personal, logical, about doing uh, your PhD in France in these sectors, which is why we have reserved an entire 30 minutes uh, Q&A session for you. But before we get into the main program, I would like to throw some light into some very generic aspects of this thematic and also very basic information on your PhD entry so that we can answer your queries, which are quite generic in nature at the beginning itself. So India is a country giving a lot of importance for engineering sciences, as you can see from the number of private engineering colleges that exist in India, apart from the government ones. And of course, the premier institutes are IITs and national institutes offering courses in engineering. So in the space of research, the international collaborations, particularly with France, that exist in the sector are plenty, which gives you all the more reason to look for opportunities in France for PhD, strengthening this already existing bond even more. Now comes sustainable development. So this concept is quite young in India, and now it could be very well be made as a strength of India if people like you pursue your PhD in France in the sector. I would say France is a pioneer in the sector. You could be the one to bring in the brain force back to India to emulsify and incorporate this perspective to the strength of engineering science in India. So another aspect I would like to discuss with you today is the general application process behind uh, a PhD in France. Any questions here, take it to our Q&A chat box. So uh, to be precise, a PhD in France uh, takes around three years and extendable to one year uh, in contrast to the five plus years of PhD in India and the qualification required for this is uh, the master's degree. So if there are BTEC students having very specific 
uh, questions about how to enroll for a PhD in France after a BTEC, uh, you can actually put it in the Q&A box and we can have a discussion over this. So before en enrolling into a PhD program, you need to find your thesis supervisor and your topic. This can be done in two ways. You can uh, directly either contact the PI, your thesis supervisor, and send him your CV and a statement of purpose. Uh, otherwise, you can go through the Campus France portals and other portals. The links will be provided uh, at the end of the session by a moderator in the uh, Q&A box, uh, in the chat box. Uh, so you can go through that. So once you uh, have figured out your PI and if he accepts you, the doctoral school also should accept you. And funding in PhD is mandatory. So if you're not supported by fellowships, uh, not to worry, you could be funded by your host university with a contract of say three years and ask our panelists or look in the university websites for this information. From, from the embassy side, we offer short term fellowships for students doing PhD in India for about uh, 10 months through Raman Sharpak Fellowship. One can also do a PhD in France through the bilateral agreement between Indo-French labs via the Cefipra project. So I'm not going to hold on to you any further. Over to Shubra and uh, enjoy the tour. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ambika. That was a good introduction and you know good information about for all our participants. I'm sure they would benefit out of it. Now I would like uh, Professor Silva to uh, share about their PhD, the university, and how students and how participants that we have today can uh, enroll in a PhD in France. Thank you. Uh, you can hear me. Uh, it's fine. So, uh, thank you for the invitation. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce my uh, university. So, uh, I will share some few slides about uh, the University of uh, Paris Saclay. So, as you know, it's one of the uh, first university uh, in the world uh, and the first in Europe. Uh, it's uh, the component of the university uh, contains 10 different uh, faculties in which you will be interested for faculty of science and also uh, some uh, engineering branch uh, with the Polytech uh, engineering uh, school. And we have also Ecole Centrale, Supélec, uh, Agroparitech, Ecole Normale Supérieure, the Institute for Optics and uh, many uh, uh, scientific uh, organizations in France, like uh, the Atomic Energy Center, CEA, the CNRS, and many others. So the Paris-Saclay environment is very uh, produceful and very interesting for students to come. Uh, you can see uh, uh, here that there is uh, many students uh, lots of PhD also, and the organization of the university now is uh, with the graduate school, and uh, there is 17 different uh, thematic graduate school, and one is completely dedicated to engineering and uh, the systems. So it's around uh, 275 labs who can uh, afford some uh, facilities for the PhD, uh, obviously. There is uh, some fab lab, some incubators uh, where the research developments can uh, go forward. And uh, more than 100 startups are created every year. Uh, and most of them are from PhD students uh, because of the research that is very interesting uh, and can go uh, to uh, some industrialization. So, as you can see on this slide for PhD, uh, especially, there is uh, each year more or uh, over 350 full PhD grants provided uh, in the university through 20 doctorate school. And there is also uh, from the university itself, uh, around 30 grants provided to uh, co-tutel uh, PhD student, so it means that uh, uh, there is a, a contract signed between one institution, so it can be in India, for, for instance, and in France, between two labs, and uh, the PhD can be done in three years in this co-tutel with some uh, sharing time between uh, India and France, and for that, the University Paris-Saclay is providing uh, providing uh, each year 
around 27 grants uh, to assume this uh, this uh, co-tutel PhD thesis. Uh, with that, there is also some uh, other ground that is very interesting for uh, for students. It's the CIF process. I don't remember if Ambika told about this, but it's uh, a contract signed between one industrial company and one uh, academic lab. And the student is part of the company as a real employee and is paid during his uh, PhD and uh, is also doing some uh, research inside the academic lab. So it's a real uh, joint PhD between academic and industrial. And obviously it's very interesting, especially in the engineering branch, because uh, after this kind of PhD, you can more easily find some job at the end because you are already part of the, uh, the, the, the company. So the company itself can uh, provide the, the job at the end of the PhD, but it's also for some student with this kind of contract, very good opportunity to join another company with a very good experience in this, uh, in this topic. So our campus is completely international. There is a summer school uh, organized each year uh, fully in English. There is also a European University Alliance in which uh, we are part of. So there is also seminars and uh, there is also lots of activities for uh, all PhD students all together from uh, you can say more social activities like visiting Paris, uh, having some uh, holidays together uh, here and there to understand the French culture. And uh, you can find uh, all the information I said and many more on the, our website and all the social uh, media uh, that you can find here about the, the university. Thank you so much, Professor Silvan. That was uh, great. And I would like to tell all my all our participants that you can listen to all their presentations and you can leave your questions in the question and answer box. And we will take them up in the second half. That is after eight o'clock. We will take all your questions. So we have a designated time for all your questions and they will be answered. Thank you so much again, Professor Silvan. Now we move on to uh, Professor Jean Marc. Thank you so much. Okay, can you see my slides and can you hear me clearly? Okay, so I, so I can start. Uh, so um, I belong to a university called the uh, University Gustav Eiffel. Uh, Eiffel, just like uh, uh, the builder of the uh, Eiffel Tower. Uh, this university is located is, uh, in the eastern part of, uh, of, of Paris, in the eastern suburbs of Paris. And uh, I'm myself running a laboratory I'm going to talk about shortly later. So this uh, university, is a merging of uh, one university, the French Institute uh, of uh, Urbanism and uh, Transportation Systems and, and several engineering schools. And because we merge all these uh, universities together, we now belong to the very famous uh, Shanghai rankings of universities, like we are ranked uh, 700 or 600, something like that. So next slide. Uh, so as I told you, we are over there. Uh, this is Paris, this is France in Europe. And as a whole, as a university, in the university, we have 23 labs, 16 training units, 17,000 students, 500 PhD students, around uh, 1,200 professors and researchers. And uh, our university, the main topic of the year of university is uh, the sustainable city. One fourth of the national uh, research and development uh, on sustainable city is, uh, is located uh, in, uh, in our campus with uh, three challenges carried by the University Gustave Eiffel, which has, which has a resource efficiency city, the safe and resilient city, and uh, the social, the, the smart and connected city, uh, all together supported by uh, researchers working in uh, social sciences or in computing science or uh, in, uh, in, uh, in engineering. So one, one flagship of our university, for instance, is a, a climate chamber uh, which is able to uh, recreate, to fully recreate uh, uh, climatic conditions in terms of temperature, 
uh, humidity, but also pollution rate uh, inside this uh, huge climate chambers in which you can put uh, small houses, small buildings uh, with uh, sensors and communication systems inside to, um, to fully control and to monitor uh, uh, an environment. And in such a way that you can evaluate the performance of your sensors or your networks of sensors. So regarding my own lab, uh, my lab is, is called Laboratory of Electronics, Communication Systems and Microsystems. And uh, our researchers have skills in architectures and devices for optical and RF links, sensors and measurement microsystems, and also antennas and propagation in complex media. All these skills together are merged into a research project, which is around sensors and communicating devices for the monitoring of the city, the environment, and the person. We use cases uh, in the field of urban monitoring, environment sensing, or people monitoring. And what you see at the bottom of the slides are different achievements we have done uh, in my lab uh, in all these fields here. And we have an also an access to print rooms and lots of facilities uh, in terms of experimental platforms. So that's from the lab itself. And as I told you, there are 16 labs, uh, 16 labs plus different departments of research in my lab. And uh, if, if uh, I focus more specifically on the doctoral school, school I belong to, which is the mathematics, mathematics, science, and technologies of information and communication doctoral schools, then you have all these slides along me. There is my, there is all, all this lab and um, among this lab, my lab. And uh, uh, so more specifically, so regarding these doctoral schools, we have 224 PhD students, uh, among them 60% of foreigners, uh, covering 40 nationalities, and maybe a, a, a dozen of uh, Indian uh, students among them, 62, 60 uh, PhD difference per year, and, uh, and that's it. So any question uh, is expected later on. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Professor Shomar. That was uh, great. And of course, we'll take up the questions later on. Now we move on to Professor Christine, and she would like to share about her university and the PhD options available there. So I shall be sharing the screen for her. Yes, please. Uh, Professor Shomar, if you could uh, just stop sharing, please. Thank you. Yes, please. Yes. You hear me? Okay. We can hear you. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you to uh, for this invitation to present uh, the doctoral school SIMPE. Uh, SIMPE uh, is uh, the acronym uh, means uh, Science and Engineering of Molecule Products, uh, Processes, and Energy. Uh, this uh, doctoral school is uh, one of the eight uh, doctoral school of uh, the University of uh, Lorraine. And uh, this university is uh, located uh, in the northeast uh, of the France, uh, northeast of uh, in the east of Paris. And uh, this doctoral school is uh, associated by the scientific uh, pole uh, EMPP. Uh, it's, uh, that means uh, energy, mechanics, process, and products. And so I, uh, this doctoral school, I, uh, I am the director of this uh, doctoral school. Uh, please, uh, next, next uh, slide. Yes, uh, so uh, this um, doctoral school, uh, uh, th there, is, uh, there, there are about uh, 200 uh, PhD students in this doctoral school, uh, two for free foreign PhD uh, for uh, um, seven nationalities. Um, 17 uh, nationalities and uh, around uh, uh, 50, 55 uh, first year and uh, we have uh, around uh, 45 and uh, 50 per year of uh, defenses. Uh, this uh, doctoral school uh, 
um, deliver uh, five uh, specialties of uh, doctoral of PhD, uh, energy and mechanics engineering of, of uh, processes, product and molecules, industrial system engineering, biotechnological processes, wound and fire, uh, fiber sciences. Uh, re recruitment, uh, the recruitment uh, is uh, by competitive examination and uh, the support uh, of this doctoral school uh, is uh, giving from uh, five laboratories, uh, innovative processes research team, the, the lab of uh, macromolecular chemistry on physical chemical chemistry, uh, physical chemical uh, research, uh, the laboratory for study and research on wood materials, and uh, the theoretical and applied mechanical energy laboratory, and uh, finally, uh, the, the reaction and process engineering laboratory, which is, uh, who is, uh, which is uh, the big uh, lab uh, of uh, the doctoral school. Uh, please, uh, next slide. So the scientific and technological fields of uh, this uh, doctoral school, uh, uh, you have the, the, the thematics, the topics of this doctoral school. Uh, we are interested in the trans transformation of uh, resources for the production of molecules, products, and energy, and for the development of the transformation processes. Uh, so we are interested in the uh, whole the processes of uh, transformation of valorization of agricultural and forestry biomass, and also for bioeconomy, uh, for the energy, energetic transition, for the industry of the future. Um, some labs uh, uh, are interested in the wood construction or the civil engineering and also for the product uh, design and user function uh, and uh, for the waste treatment and management, the circular economy. And so uh, after PhD, the industrial and professional sector concern uh, wound industry, food industries, energy, chemical, cosmetic, pharmaceutical, civil engineering, recycling uh, industry, and safety and risk management area. And so for the last uh, slide, please. So if you need uh, some information, you can uh, um, see on the website of the doctoral school uh, of the University of Lorraine, and uh, you can uh, you can uh, touch a square uh, simply, and uh, you can have uh, more information if you want. Thank you. Hello. Okay, I think we lost uh, Shubra. So um, uh, I think we can go to our final uh, research speaker talk uh, by Jean-Claude Dufour. Uh, thank you. I, my computer just rebooted too, so I'm a bit of a uh, hurry. Now you want to play Professor Jean-Claude? Yeah. Okay. Do you hear me? Do you see my screen? Okay, thank you. So. I'm going to present uh, the Institut Polytechnique de Paris. Uh, I'm a teacher at uh, Telecom Paris, uh, one of the five schools in Institut, um, so together with Ecole Polytechnique, Insta, Ensao, and Telecom Sud Paris. Um, it's going to be difficult to present to you the, the, the wide scope of PhD you can do in um, uh, IP Paris. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go over the, 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 the advertising for the school and just go over. So there, there are, you can, you could do a PhD in biology, chemistry, information, communication, electronics, that would be more in, in my school, computer science, data, artificial intelligence, also in my school but also mechanics, physics, language and humanities and economics. We have um, about 900 PhD students at the moment. Um, the, probably the easiest way to um, come and do one PhD in our 
um, set of schools is to do a PhD track, which means uh, find a master and um, go on with the, within one of the ma uh, PhD tracks into, um, because basically that would solve uh, finding a, a lab, uh, a subject and a lab together with finding a PhD. Um, so we are very close actually to Paris-Saclay University. We have lots of masters in common with them. Um, oh, there are multiple doctoral schools, but that's a complexity you may not need to know uh, for uh, finding a PhD. Um, what can I say to you guys? Hmm. Well, um, the, 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 as I said, the scope of subjects is very wide and um, the most important thing is for you to find a contact interested in what you want to do in our uh, organization. So if you, if you want to find a PhD in one of our, uh, one of our schools, concentrate on that, finding a, a good contact. Um, what else? Um, I think I'm going to reserve time for questions. That would be best. Shibra, are you there? Yes. Thanks a lot, Professor Jean-Claude. Uh, yes, we can now take up all the questions. We have received quite a few questions in our uh, chat box. So I'll begin with the first one. So there was one of the participants who mentioned that uh, he has graduated from India and France in uh, European and International Studies and is keen on pursuing a PhD in climate change policy or sustainable development. So what are the options for the same? Are there any uh, possibilities that a participant can uh, pursue PhD in that field? Okay, uh, I can I can answer maybe because I I talked about sustainable cities. Those are many fields in this topic, obviously. So uh, in, in my lab, more specifically, uh, we have topics around uh, uh, small sensors uh, realized in clean rooms and with micro machine uh, techniques. And we have also uh, uh, we de we develop also uh, small devices to harvest energy from the environment, like. Uh, uh, mechanical energy, thermal energy, and so on, uh, developed for the IoT to, to, to power up small devices uh, uh, which are used in uh, the Internet of Things, for instance. So in that sense, we work in the sustainable, in the sustainable uh, city uh, concept because we develop sensors and we develop systems to monitor the city of tomorrow. So uh, there are options uh, in this field, uh, in the lab and in the university, on my field. There is another question that we have, which is uh, more for the uh, universities and the in Indian institutions in India, you know, in India. So what is the possibility of organizing workshops between Indian institutions and French universities? Maybe one of you can take that up and then we move on to our alumni. I'll repeat the question. Is there a possibility of uh, organizing workshops between your universities, the French universities and Indian institutions, you know, for this PhD? You mean, you mean advertise uh, uh, PhD programs in uh, yes. Indian universities as a question? Yeah, obviously yes. it's possible. Obviously it's possible. If uh, uh, Indian universities are okay to, to let their students going to France to, to make a PhD, obviously. So we can organize it very easily. Yeah, the question is yes. The response is All right, thanks a lot. Now moving on to the other questions related to uh, universities, I would like our aluminus to share uh, his experience. Dr. Praveen, if you could just share with all the participants, how was your experience as a PhD scholar? Yeah, and yeah. Go ahead with it. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
So hi everyone, I am Praveen Bhadrani and I came to France in 2015 as a part of a dual degree master's exchange program. So I did my first year of uh, master's in University of Petroleum and Energy Studies in Dehradun in India and the second year of master's in Polytechnon. And so I got an MTech in Renewable Energy and a, a master's degree over here in uh, Thermal and Energy Sciences. Uh, during my master's internship, that is when I was amazed by the uh, environment in the research labs over here in France. And that's why I was keen on going for a PhD uh, further after my master's. So with the help of the professors over there, I sent out applications and I finally went for a PhD, uh, which was more close to geotechnical engineering, but it was like a, a multidisciplinary uh, PhD. And I did my PhD in uh, IFSTAR, which is now University Gustav Eiffel. So, which is basically a research institute for the uh, research in transport and infrastructure. And finally, I defended my PhD last year. So now I'm working as a postdoctoral researcher in Ecole Centrale de Nantes and in the domain of geomechanics and induced seismicity and earthquakes. So if I would sum up my experience over here, over the last five years, uh, in French, I would say that the Anthroya it was unbelievable. It was really nice. It was super. Uh, on a personal level, I would say the obvious advantages are that uh, the three years period over here for PhD is quite optimum to contribute towards the scientific community through your publications, and it is not too, uh, too big as well. Moreover, you dig into the research directly from the first day itself, so you don't have coursework, and the coursework is only for up obtaining the credits. So you can do that over the period of three years. Secondly, you get a salary, which is extremely good enough amount in order to live a comfortable life over here. And plus you have kind of a dual status, which is that you are exposed to a professional environment during the research and a student experience. So you get the student benefits as well, such as discounts in transport and theaters and whatnot. So obviously I would say that it is good to learn French language. Uh, it is not mandatory, obviously, in research. Uh, but it can be nice to learn because it's a nice language, obviously. And But the people over here, they are really helpful, really supportive. And even if you speak a little bit French, if, if you make an effort from your end, uh, the people try to understand you. They try to help you. Uh, and professionally, the most striking thing for me was there is no hierarchical uh, differences. So even as a PhD student, you are, your opinions, your thinking, your ideas are given a priority and are considered while making the final decisions. So which is a very big thing. So you're not considered exactly as a student, but you're considered more like a research colleague uh, right from the beginning of your research career. So yeah, in a gist, I, I mean, I wouldn't go too much into details because I'm open to answering any questions, but uh, I would say that professionally and personally, it, is, it has been an enriching experience for me. That's wonderful, Dr. Praveen. Thank you for sharing your uh, experience. And that does bring me to the next question because you did mention about the language knowledge. I would like to ask, is it mandatory for any applicant to have an English language test, which is IELTS in India, or uh, knowledge of French while they're applying for PhD in France? Is it mandatory? Uh, like I said, knowledge of French is uh, not exactly mandatory. Well, I can I can reply maybe. I yes, can reply uh, uh, at the PhD level. It's not mandatory at all. I mean, as long as you speak English well, and that's the case for ninety nine percent of uh, English students, uh, Indian students, no problem. In case you want to start uh, your education at the bachelor degree, yeah, yeah, you have to have minimum level for sure. And, and what about at other universities, Professor Silva, Professor Christine, and Professor Jean Claude, if you would like to add? Yes, uh, I will say it's the same, yes, for PhD students. It's not uh, at the level of PhD necessary to, to speak fluent uh, French. But uh, it's true that uh, if after PhD the student wants to stay in France and uh, find a job uh, in France, Many companies uh, will have some difficulties to hire the student if he's not speaking French at all, especially the HR uh, examination and uh, 
discussion with the, the, the human resources of the company, most of them, they are not too much uh, fluent yet in English, and so they like to speak French. So it's very difficult when the student is not speaking at all uh, French to find a job uh, in, a, in a French company. Then uh, this is the, uh, you can say the, the most of, of the, the company, but after you can uh, have some company that uh, you can hire some uh, uh, non-French speaker, but most of the time French will be mandatory at that step. So it's better if the student can learn French during his PhD, whatever, if uh, his purpose is to stay in France after the PhD. Yes, and for the University of Lorraine, uh, it's necessary that uh, for the defense, uh, uh, PhD uh, student uh, uh, write uh, uh, a few uh, little parts uh, in French of the manuscript, and they have to uh, to to speak uh, uh, some five five minutes in French uh, before the defense, and. Uh, uh, the important point is uh, that uh, some formation is uh, in French uh, because uh, uh, PhD students have to follow uh, some uh, courses, some formation, and sometimes uh, it is in French, so it could be a problem. But uh, I think we, we have uh, courses in French uh, to, to learn French in the University of Lorraine. So the foreign uh, uh, student can follow this uh, formation. I want to confirm all that was said and insist that even uh, between masters and end of PhD and postdoc after, um, in, n only English is not a problem. And even uh, I'm hiring uh, PhDs and postdoc to teach to French students, and it's usually 80% of the time, it's not a problem. Whenever it's technical, it's fine to be in English, even in France. So just don't let um, little French uh, bar you from coming. All right. So that again, uh, you know, brings another question. What are the key factors that you look for in a student, you know, while hiring a PhD student? And what are the options for exchange students, you know, if someone is applying from IITs? the Indian institutions of technology in India. So what are the key factors that you look at for your universities? Okay, uh, I guess I can answer first, but it will be the same answer for the, for the other professors. Uh, I guess yes, where yes. you are coming from is important, obviously, your motivation and uh, maybe a recommendation later from your professors. It's better if the professors in France know the professors in India also because there is a confident uh, relationship between them. Um, what is important also, because very often when you come from nowhere, when we don't know you at all, and you apply at different places at the same time, there is a harsh competition also. So it's better if you are recommended by somebody, and if this person knows somebody in France, uh, myself for example, you see the problem is a confidence problem. But once the confidence is established, then uh, it's better and a good student can apply generally around April, I mean, in my case, around April or June, or no, April or March, in order to apply for, for a position in October. That's a question I saw in, in the blog here. Okay, that's okay. That's my answer. All right. And for uh, other universities, if you would like to add, yes, Professor Sivan. Yeah, I would like to, to add something. From my experience, I know that, but it's not only from India, it's from all the foreign countries. It's a little bit difficult sometimes when the student is applying directly from uh, the, the foreign country for PhD because it is not known. Uh, it's really important sometimes to do uh, internship uh, at the master two level before because like this you can understand more how the work is uh, working, how the supervisor and uh, all the colleagues are used to work and like this you can be better uh, introduced in the French system and then obviously after you will have all the opportunities to be presented by the supervisor or any colleagues from the lab 
for a PhD grant through the doctorate school examination or through any other grants uh, offered by the university. Because this is true, it's extremely difficult when you are coming, like uh, Jean-Marc said, from nowhere, because when you don't know the person, you don't know if uh, uh, the marks are good or not comparing to other, because India is a big country, especially, and the marks uh, can be different from uh, IIT, from universities. So for French people, it's difficult sometimes uh, to understand if it's a good level or average level. So it's if you can find uh, internship, because it's very, you can say, more uh, easy, easier to find internship at the master level. It's for six months uh, in any French lab. People will say, OK, we are confident it's six months, so it's not a big deal. We can uh, welcome you for six months in our lab to do some experiments. And if it's matching good, then it's obvious you can stay for PhD and everybody will uh, help you to find a PhD grant. But to come directly after master in, in, from India, directly to PhD without knowing everybody, uh, nobody uh, in France, this is quite difficult. All right. Also, if a student is coming from a different background, let's say management background and wishes to pursue PhD in engineering, is it possible? I, I think the answer is no. It would be impossible for a French student, so it should be impossible also for an Indian student. All right. The next question that we have, a person who's been a professor you know, assistant professor with five plus years of experience, will that, will that student be allowed to work as an assistant teacher along with pursuing PhD? Is that possible? Um, I think we, we used to have a, an age limit in the past for PhD students. I, I am no, I'm not sure it's, it's uh, valid yet. I think it's no longer valid. So that means anybody of any age can apply for a PhD Mm -hmm. uh, unless maybe he's over 60, but, I, I, but I'm pretty sure about that. So this, this person can ask for, for a grant, but he has to be tested. As I was said before, he, had to, he has to be tested before during an internship, or he has to be, be recommended very warmly by somebody of, which is of confidence. Okay. Well, cases, yes, uh, I've had uh, uh, guys hired as engineers, Mm -hmm. And then worked well, a year in the in my lab, and then suddenly they said, came to me, maybe I want to do a PhD. We found funding. They did it. Um, that's yeah. It's we we actually like this this way of uh, of doing it. So yes, come even if you're 30 uh, and have ex uh, working experience. But as Sylvain said, the importance is that we know you. So internship or a little bit of work with us before would help. Is there any age limit uh, up to which any? Perfect. No. Nope. There's another question, uh, which I believe our uh, alumnus could answer. That is, is it possible to do a part-time job along with PhD? Uh, I would strongly recommend no, <laughs> because the PhD, I mean, PhD is quite demanding. Mm -hmm. So you have to work a lot. You have to read a lot of papers. Mm -hmm. And like I said, you get a salary, which is sufficient enough to live comfortably over here. And by comfortably, I mean really comfortable. So I would really recommend not to go for part-time jobs. And I would say no to it. <laughs> I believe uh, Professor Jean-Claude wanted to say something. Um, it's the, the, the problem is not really with PhD. As Pravin says, uh, you will get a, a, a stipend which is adequate. Um, the problem is more if you come for your master's, then you will not yet get a stipend and the part-time job would make sense. But, mm -hmm. but actually, that's difficult because you will be coming adapting to friends and, and trying to get good grades for the master. It, 
I'm sorry to say that uh, it's, it's a difficult, um, I, I would not recommend trying to study in France in one of our universities with uh, a part-time job. Almost all the, the students who are uh, in difficulty are because of that. All right, all right. Um, this next question, is there any deadline for PhD applications? Um, may I explain the process? Maybe um, I can explain the, the usual process in doctoral schools, or maybe Christine could do it actually, because she knows it as well as well. As I know, so normally the process is the following one. Um, in doctoral schools, you have a thesis proposal coming from different labs, okay? And they are going to be interleaved and they are going to be ranked, okay? So that means, first of all, labs have to provide candidates and subjects to the doctoral school. And this process can take months, like six months. So maybe topics or subjects are going to be defined in November, December, January, the previous year. And then candidates are going to be selected in February, March, April, and all together, all this information are going to be brought to the doctoral school by May, June, let's say. So that means it's a long time process and you have to contact your advisors like in November or December, the previous year, one year, one year before the start. That's, but there are other types of grants. This is, these are ministry grants. There are other types of fellowships and this can be different. You can get fellowships from con contracts uh, all year long at any time. Okay, okay. Uh, Professor Christine, would you like to add something to it? No, it, uh, it's correct. It's uh, uh, exactly the same uh, for the University of Lorraine. It's the same. In, uh, the, the examination is uh, run uh, during, uh, the, during uh, two or three months. Uh, uh, it's the beginning of the year and after, yes, for the beginning of the PhD in October. It's uh, the same, exactly the same. Okay, so um, keeping the current crisis in mind, has the this pandemic COVID affected the applications, PhD applications? I guess not really. All right, that's that's wonderful. There's another another question that we had. Can a person pursue PhD after a break of, you know, let's say two years post their master studies? Um, Professor Silva, would you like to take this question? The question is, uh, can we enroll, be enrolled in PhD student after a break? Yes, uh, after break, like let's say two years after completion of the master studies. It depends what was the break for, I would say, okay. because it's obvious that uh, what you did uh, for your studies, uh, the diploma mm -hmm. you had and all the experience you have uh, will be taken into account for the PhD uh, granting because it's obvious that uh, there is some scholarship and there is uh, many applicants. So the, the, there is some kind of contest, you can say, in the doctorate school between the students and the subject. And so uh, if everything is uh, quite understandable for everybody, if you can explain that uh, you stop your studies and uh, after you did something, I don't know if it's an experience in private company, for example, or for doing something, teaching in some uh, schools uh, in India, this is quite understandable. So you can explain easily that you did this and now you want to start PhD uh, to take uh, some more skills uh, or to do the research. So if you can explain uh, what you did, there is no problem. All right. And also, is it uh, mandatory to have master studies like or a student can pursue PhD right after their undergraduate studies, right after their bachelor? Yes. No, unless you are a genius, I guess it's impossible. In France, like in anywhere, anywhere in the world, I mean, it's no, no, it's mandatory to the master. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, also for the B Tech, probably. That's why the question is there because uh, after four years B Tech in India, you can do a PhD. Um, so, do you can can you do that the same thing, or can, should go and do an M two and then and do a PhD? It depends. Uh, so that's why I said uh, previously that uh, it will be very important to contact and to have. Uh, uh, 
a strong contact with the supervisor before because it will depend if you're coming from IIT or if you are coming from one university. Sometimes the BTEC, you can have kind of equivalent uh, diploma in France. So I know that uh, in our university, for some BTEC student, they can go directly in PhD program, but it's not uh, always, uh, there is no rule. Uh, I mean, uh, so sometimes the, the PhD uh, track will be uh, forbidden for some BTEC student because they will have to do uh, M2, uh, one year of uh, master to complete uh, because there will be problem for the correct equivalent uh, equivalency. So uh, this is really depending on the track in which you are engaged before the uh, institution where you are coming from and the equivalency that friends can offer uh, for your BTEC. So this you should, uh, before coming to France or applying in any PhD uh, program, you should confirm France, uh, in France if your BTEC is recognized as uh, M1 or M2 in France. That's, that's great. Moving on to the next question. Uh, one of the participants asked, is there any difference in the working hours of uh, doing a PhD in academia and in a company? Yes, I think I was given some clue about this uh, question before. Yes, it exists in France. Uh, it's through the, the CIF program. So where you can have uh, both academic and private company all together. So you will be hired. In fact, uh, from administrative point of view, you will be hired by the company. So you will be considered as a salary from the company. So you will get salary. You will completely uh, follow the all rules of the company. But sometimes you will have uh, some uh, experiments, uh, some uh, work to do in academic lab, and uh, you will do your PhD in between these two uh, institutions. So it's completely uh, possible. And uh, there is no uh, problem for foreign people to be hired like, uh, through this program depends on the company. Sometimes there can be some confidentiality uh, issues, but normally there is no problem. Uh, if you are not French, you can be hired. But uh, as I mentioned before, if you want to stay <laughs> in France or in the company, uh, some tires, somehow they will ask you to, to learn French. Okay. okay. And about working hours, um, they are very different. It depends on the team you're in. The, mm -hmm. Some teams are uh, academic teams. You can uh, work uh, uh, noon to midnight. Uh, some teams, um, they are stricter. And usually in industry, you're tied with the, the, the culture of the company. So probably in a company, you will get more standard working hours. And one thing, um, the fact that in France, it's we have to do the PhD in three years, max four, mm -hmm. puts quite a lot of pressure on you to do uh, a bit more. But um, so that's, that's more toward the second and third year. But still, the working hours usually start normal and end up uh, kind of crazy. You you agree, Pravin? Huh? Yeah, yeah, I agree. I totally agree. And especially, I would like to add that in academia, there is, if you are coming into a research career, consider that your working hours should be a little bit flexible. You should be more flexible because it depends how you want to work. Some people are more comfortable working in the afternoon or even in late evening hours. Some people are more comfortable working in the morning hours. So you have to adjust yourself a little bit. But uh, like, like uh, Jean-Claude said, at the end of second or third year, you totally get adjusted to it. So no problem. So while we're talking about... Yes, please, just, please. One more thing, you can, you can get PhD grants from academia, from companies, as I said before, but you have also uh, institutes of research in France, lots of institutes of research uh, which are not necessarily academia, like CEA, 
the Center for Atomic Energy, or you have uh, many of them, and you can get grants from this institute also. It's possible to find other options to this institute. But the same thing as I said before, I, I read a lot of the messages on the, on the right hand side of the, of the screen. I said before, you have to be known. You have to be known before. So it's, it's, it's pointless, hopeless to apply by sending CVs and messages. You have to be known through internship or by studying in France for one year or by being strongly supported by somebody who is known on the other side. That's the way I work. Okay, that's important to understand. That's one of the messages. Okay, important messages. Just on the application part, I would like to add one more point. Once you send your CV and motivation letter and stuff, and once you have the contact with the supervisor, when you have a discussion with your supervisor or like an interview with the supervisor, it is quite important that you read the research subject, their research domain and their, what they are doing, the research exactly in their team uh, and form some questions on it because the motivation which you see is not through the motivation letter, but it is what you speak in the interview or what you show yourself in the interview or what you discuss with the supervisor. So your questions show that clearly, how much motivated you are. And that is, I think, quite an important point in the application. All right. Uh, I believe we have taken up a lot of questions already. Just to uh, conclude, I would like to ask one last question. What is the, uh, you know, what are the tips that you would like to give a prospective applicants who would be applying now to PhD? There are some pointers that you can give to all our applicants. You know, from the university's perspective, what you are looking for, and from uh, a student's perspective who applied for PhD and is now working on postdoc, if you could just share one point each. Yeah. Basically, that they should. I think it's, a, it's a combination. Everything. It's it's a combination of what has been said before. What has been what has been said by Pravin is, is perfectly true. You have to know who you are talking to. So what okay. don't don't talk about chemistry with me, or don't talk about uh, 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 engineering, um, civil engineering to Silva, for instance, for sure. So first of all, focus. Be here. I mean, it's easier if you have an internship if you are known. Clearly, mm -hmm. it's. I mean, you are not going to uh, accept somebody at home if you don't know this. This person at all, that, that, that makes sense. So very important, internship, uh, training in France or whatever you want, but be known and you have to be tested by the laboratory. Okay, you can, it, it's, 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 it's easy to understand that we cannot pay for a grant for three years with, without knowing the person. Okay, so, uh, and what else? And, uh, and yes, and obviously, for instance, in my case, my personal case, we hire PhD students from one university in India, which is maybe not the best one, which is the University of Kerala, Koshin University, Kerala, because we know the people there. I am going to have a student, so we are waiting for him because, because of the COVID, it's complicated to make him come. He was supposed to come the 1st of October, but it will be delayed the 1st of November or December, probably. But this guy was tested six months during the internship, uh, and also he was known because I know the professors in Kerala who taught him for years. So everything is clear, all right? Everything is clear. And as a, maybe one thing you have to, 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 to understand or to find is a network. Maybe your professors in India have a French network and they can contact some, anyway, et cetera, et cetera. It, it has to be built. Your relationship is a long-term uh, construction, I would say. All right. Thank you very much. I would like Ambika, the... <laughs> We can actually take up all, you know, conclude all of this and uh, let our attendees know how to proceed with things. Over okay. to you. Thank you, Shubra. And it was a very good session, actually. We tried putting in all the questions. There were multiple questions still. Uh, so uh, I will try and answer them. So I put my mail ID here, uh, aan at ifindia.in, in case you have any queries, just uh, reach back. Uh, to us uh, and also I think all the procedures what is required and all the apprehensions about doing the PhD is more or less cleared 
Uh, and uh, so if any one of you is willing to put your email ID so that the students can contact you, you may do so. But then if you think you will be flooded with emails, please do not do that. And uh, we can also uh, let them know how to reach out to you if you see, if we see a good candidate, because we have a fair amount of idea of uh, which institute they're coming from. And if we think they're good candidates, uh, we can actually write to you and then direct them there. So uh, I think uh, pretty much everything is clear and all the links are also put up now in the chat box so you can actually go and look at them and see which are the good universities, what programs they have um, and how to apply and every information is there in all these links, uh, answers to all the generic questions. So I guess uh, we can uh, now close the session uh, unless anybody else wants to make any closing remarks. All right. Well, so, thank you to all our panelists. Um, all right, then, everyone. Uh, good night. Have a good evening. And uh, thank you for coming. Thank you for making this uh, so, so, so interesting. Thank you. <laughs>